Natasha here from St. James Parish in Novi, Michigan. Continuing our self-help series, and today's topic is sexual morality part one. There will also be a sexual morality part two. So in part one, I just want to kind of explore the church's teaching on sexual morality in a general sense, and then look at it in part two from a specific sense. Basically, sexual morality that the church teaches is that God created us male and female. And these two parts, these two aspects of, of God, uh, in this sense, refer to the fact that we are complementary. Okay. That we complement one another. That a male and a female image God in themselves, but then when they come together, and in the, in the course of marriage, for example, the church teaches that when a man and woman marry, they image not only themselves, but they image Christ and the church. So, in sexual morality, we look at the human being as being sacred, that is holy, we look at the human being as being the image of God. We look at the human being as being a uh, person that is that's someone who is unique and gifted. Each having their specific talents and gifts and attributes. Okay. As such, we look at each person as being able to share his or her gifts and talents with those around them. In terms of sexual morality, the church from the beginning of the time and, and God and so forth intended that sex was for procreation. Okay, we read about this in Genesis. But also unification that is the unity of the, of the spouses. And it's also to be really, uh, to not only procreate in the family, but to make society better. So that in, in sexual activity between a husband and wife, they're to beget children. They are to be unified as a couple. And in the process, by building up their family, they then build up society, make society a better place in which to live. And so that's why the church teaches, and has taught for 2,000 years, that the proper place for sexual expression is within the family unit, is within the marital activity. We all know, of course, that uh, human beings are, you know, very curious. Human beings sometimes make mistakes. But human beings are to really channel that energy into a way that really helps to focus on this aspect of sexual morality. When we look at what happens when a person grows up, There's something called orientation. There is activity. And there is lifestyle. Okay. Orientation refers to where their basic um, feelings are directed. And we talk about heterosexual or homosexual. bisexual and asexual. Okay. Heterosexual means opposite. Homosexual means same. Bisexual means both. Asexual means none. Okay. So some people are attracted to members of the opposite sex. Other people are attracted to members of the same sex. Some are attracted to members of both sexes, and some are attracted to no sex at all. 
orientation is generally determined from the womb to about five or six years old. Okay. Now, a person may never act out on their orientation. They may never put their feelings into action. They may never put their psychological makeup into process. But many people begin when they're in their teens to discover activity. Activity can be just exploration. It can involve masturbation. It can involve pornography. It could also involve um, touching. And it could even involve sexual intercourse. Exploration, basically recognizing they have a body. Masturbation, looking at their sexual organs as areas of pleasure, their erogenous zones. They find they derive pleasure when they touch themselves. Pornography, looking at pictures or images or stories that evoke certain images in their brain. Touching, meaning touching another person. Uh, engaging in heavy petting, that sort of thing. And then sexual intercourse, actually engaging in an activity. These activities can occur, you know, beginning very early, all the way through our entire life. When a person chooses a particular uh, outlet, that is, most of their activity centers around a member of the opposite sex. We call those people straight. Okay. When most of their activity um, focuses on a member of the same sex, we use the term gay. When a person, you know, uh, focuses on members of both sexes, we call them bisexual. When a person does not have any kind of sexual activity, we call that person a celibate. Activity and lifestyle are choices. They are choices that people make. That is a full conscious decision. Okay. As such, choices <clears throat> can be sinful. Choices could be immoral. And choices can be moral. When someone does something when they're very little and they don't understand all of these implications, those choices basically may be immoral, okay, or what we call premoral because they have no concept of them. But as a person ages and the person learns more about the church's teaching, learns more about certain activities as being sinful, then a choice they make could be sinful. Or a choice that they make could be a moral choice. For example, someone who is, let's just say they're 16 years old, and they, they know that most of their orientation is directed towards members of the opposite sex, they may engage in some of these activities here, and if they don't know that they're considered sinful, well, that person might be excused or might be given, uh, you know, a label of being inculpable. However, if they've been taught that things like masturbation, pornography, touching, sexual intercourse are wrong, then if they make the choice to do those things, they're committing a sin. If a person who is, let's say, in their 30s discovers that she is heterosexual and she decides to get married, okay, and then she begins to engage, you know, decides she finds somebody she's considered straight, and what she does within the context of marriage would be considered moral activity, as long as she's doing it with her husband. 
So the idea is to recognize that in sexual morality, you know, the choices we make can be sinful. We could choose a lifestyle. We could be a, 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 a heterosexual man who chooses not to get married, but goes out and engages in activity with a number of females over the course of his lifetime. He may be a straight, a straight person, but he's doing immoral activities, he's doing sinful activities. Whereas someone who is heterosexual and, and gets married to someone and is faithful to that person, they, the activities that they engage in in the context of marriage would be considered moral. The idea is that sexual morality for the church happens especially within the context of the marital sacrament. That we make choices. Outside of the marital sacrament, the choices we make are often sinful. But if we choose to avoid masturbation, pornography, touching, sexual intercourse, because we're not married, then we're making moral choices. In our next uh, video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about sexual morality and giving specific examples. But in this one, I just kind of wanted to give you an overview that people are oriented a certain way, usually because of their psychosexual development but they make choices based on that orientation, which can be sinful at times. And if they choose a lifestyle which is contrary to what the church teaches, if they choose a lifestyle that uh, really ignores these things, that they are a sacred human being, that they are an image of God, that they are a unique gifted person, what ends up happening is that person eventually begins to have a warped sense of themselves and a warped sense of others. So in our next video, we're going to be exploring some of these aspects in greater detail. So I encourage you to really think about the church's sexual morality. Read the catechism. Read what God has said. Read what the church has said about how precious each human being is. How each person is in the image and likeness of God. How each person's sexual identity is a gift from God meant to be shared in very specific context of marriage. And that their sexual identity is, is part and parcel of who they are. And the church really is here to help us to recognize that God calls each one of us to experience the fullness of God's grace. So let us all recognize that our sexuality is a gift from God designed to be shared in very particular ways in a way that really is life-giving, loving, and holy.